This video is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the Dragonfly range of USB DACs. Click to audioquest.com for more information. Hi-Fi is a journey and we're going to go on a journey today because Hi-Fi components, loudspeakers, amps, DACs, turntables, they don't exist in isolation, they exist as part of a complete Hi-Fi system. So this video isn't just about the Wharfdale Diamond 12.1 stand mount loudspeakers that you see behind me here, it's about the speakers themselves but also the electronics that I use to partner with them. And then therefore what those electronics tell us about the loudspeakers. So this video is about Wharfdale Diamond 12.1 system compilation. The 12.1 is designed by a German guy called Karl Heinz Fink. And he was hired by Wharfdale to come in and rework completely the, uh, the, the new Diamond series, the new version 12 Diamond series. So this 12.1 is only one speaker in a whole range of loudspeakers that comprise a Diamond series. But these sell for, I've only got the British price actually, £249. So these are probably the, the most affordable loudspeaker that I've ever made a video about on this channel. So when we take the magnetic grills off the loudspeaker, on the front baffle we see a one inch soft dome tweeter that's been coated with some kind of high gloss finish to ensure a smoother frequency response and then below that we've got a 13 centimeter clarity that's what Wharfdale call it clarity mid bass driver that's made of polypropylene and something called mica and it's surrounded by a new low damping material so it can move more freely and this is apparently to improve dynamics. Now unlike the last two or three generations of the Diamond series these 12.1s are rear ported and Karl Heinz Fink's sort of area of expertise is in cabinet damping so he really believes that making the cabinet talk it, you know to the room as little as possible is the best way for him to reduce the number of compromises when designing a speaker at this price point. So inside this stand mount there are extra points of bracing inside to minimize yeah minimize cabinet resonances. You know one thing I've noticed about these speakers straight away is it, it's quite amazing how far affordable loudspeakers have come in terms of fit and finish. I mean, yes, these are wrapped in a vinyl finish, but overall, they're very tidily made and I couldn't really point to anything and go, oh, that's a sign of its 249 pound price point. What about sound? Now obviously we have to judge speakers like this according to their price point, not necessarily in absolute terms. However, I will say that they are, they're very tight and cohesive. They don't so kind of feel loose and like they're losing things or losing their composure. I think that's what audiophiles say. They're very good with complex material 
Um, and that means the vocals don't get lost as sort of guitars and things swirl around like with the Kitchens of Distinction or with the Cocteau Twins or even Built to Spill, you know, or even some of the more intense moments from Granddaddy and R.E.M. Mind you, that was the whitest list of music I've ever reeled off on one of these videos. That was terrible. Anyway, so they kind of really hold it together with this kind of music. This is the kind of music I listen to. Um, yeah, so tight, well composed, cohesive. They're also really good with instrument separation, layer separation. And one thing that doesn't really get talked about enough, I don't think, in, in loudspeaker reviews is speed. This is a very fast sounding loudspeaker. And that means we get just the right balance of sort of couch bound relaxation and excitement. So this is kind of a, it's a slightly lean in kind of speaker. Now, what about frequency extension? Well, I'll talk about bass in a moment. With the top end, it seems to go a very long way north. I don't think anybody would complain that there's not enough air or detail in the top end. I really don't think, it, you know, as a whole, there is much to complain about for their £249 price point. However, they do have, for me, two standout qualities. Number one is mid-range clarity, so with vocals. And especially in the upper mid-range, that's a very sort of transparent area. And the other sort of really strong suit that this loudspeaker offers is with microdynamics. They're very good with microdynamics. That's the, the kind of smaller changes, the sort of percussion and you know snaps and pops, especially if you listen to something like Mouse on Mars, electronic music, or I'm looking at my CD rack behind Olaf here, or Fotec or Square Pusher. You know, it's very good for those kind of like real minute but exciting changes in the music. Cliche alert, you would have to step up to more expensive speakers to better these. Now, unless I say which more expensive speakers, that cliche just hangs in the air like meaningless fluff. It's just nonsense. It's like candy floss, you know? It's just, you, you, you eat it and it's nice and sweet and you think it's good, but there's just no nourishment there at all, none. So for example, the Q Acoustics 3030i, which are one generation on from another speaker, I think the 3020i, that was designed by Karl-Heinz Fink. Um, these give us a slightly wider and taller soundstage than do the Wharfdale Diamond 12.1. They're also a bit sort of smoother, a bit more polite, a bit more refined in the top end. Now, again, remember that, because we're coming back to that as well. I've been listening to this album an awful lot the last few weeks. This is Con Force's Dawn Chorus. And it's very sort of moody and melodic techno. Now this tells us a lot. It's actually very well produced, like really immaculately put together. I recommend it, the vinyl's hard to get. Um, but the, yeah, this tells us that the, the bass extension of the Diamond 12.1 is not as good as say the Kef LS50 Meta. So I think the diamonds go down to 65 hertz, the LS50 go down to 47, and you can hear it. And this is one reason why some people spend a lot more money on their loudspeakers than 250 quid. And also from the LS50 Meta, we hear greater weight and a better sense of music's tone. Now I don't say all this to the achievements of Karl Heinz Fink, Quite the opposite. It's just to explain, you know, why a speaker costs 250 and what you get when you spend more. And I explain all of this for another reason, is because you, you tend to meet a lot of people online who will tell you, you only need to spend 250 quid on a pair of speakers like these. And for some people, that's absolutely true. And make no mistake, these are absolutely fantastic speakers for the money. But 
Implicit in this whole you only need to spend kind of comment is you're an idiot if you spend more than 250, which is absolutely not true, which is why I'm putting these speakers in context with more expensive models. So yes, at 250, these are fantastic and diminishing returns, I think, kick in here, but that doesn't mean you don't get more when you spend more. And the Diamond 12.1 also present a bit of a problem for the newcomer putting together a complete system. Remember I said this video is going to be about a complete system. In that, they sell for 250 and Audiophile Wisdom says you should spend at least 50% of your budget on loudspeakers. So if you've spent 250 on loudspeakers, that only gives you 250 for your amplifier and your DAC and your streamer. Now, I don't know of a single, I mean, may, maybe there are a couple of amps out there for sort of like 200 quid, 150 quid, um, that would be good with these speakers. I don't know, I, I don't have them. So I started out with something far more expensive than that. I started with the Blue Sound Power Node 2i that I've reviewed before. It's this sort of all-in-one complete streamer DAC amplifier solution behind me here, the white thing. And from that, I could, you know, you could hear what I call pert bass, a very squeegee clean mid-range, but also an ebullient top end with lots of air, but also lots of presence and probably, yeah, just a bit too much. And occasionally they would cause the Wharfdales to stray into brightness or glare. And I report on this because really this amp is not the right amp for these speakers. But what was really interesting was what followed that. So once I'd sort of almost given up on the power node working with these speakers, I hooked in a turntable, the project, the white one behind me, I hooked that into the back of the power node and just played this Conforce record. And the turntable is much smoother and much softer I'm probably less resolving in the top end. I thought, yeah, this is the sound that I want. Something not quite so keen in the lower treble and upper mids. So that made me realize I needed an amplifier that was a you know warmer, richer. And if it meant being not quite as resolving, I was okay with that. And that search led me to the NAD C316BEE version two integrated. Class AB, not Class D Hypex like the Blue Sound. And from that, we do get this sort of warmer, richer presentation from the Wharfdales. It doesn't quite resolve quite as cleanly, but that is the right balancing act for the Diamond 12.1's tweeter. It, it, you know, you have to sort of choose your components according to your loudspeaker, and you have to sort of live with the compromises and also work out where, where you want things to really come on song. So I was really focused on the, the uppermost frequencies in choosing an amplifier. And um, yeah, with the, um, the NAD, it's much punchier in the low end. The dynamics are better, but it didn't quite have the control that the blue sound had overall in, in, the, yeah, in the bass but I was much happier with the NAD than the Blue Sound. And also from a price point of view, because the NAD sells for, I have to get this right, I think it's 369 euros. Again, obviously that's not within this sort of 50% rule budget thing. I think this is a thing about these loudspeakers is they throw that thinking out of the window. And because these speakers are so good for so little money, you are gonna have to get used to the idea you're gonna have to spend more money on the amp than you did on the speakers.
what about the digital front end? I'm not going to worry about the turntable. If you want a turntable, get one. If you don't, don't. But streaming, for me, the core of entry-level streaming is the Raspberry Pi 4 and its USB output. I've covered that in a previous video. Also in a previous video, I covered the shit Modi 3 and the Topping D10S. And they're both $100 DAC. So I thought they would be perfect candidates for this system. And the Topping, I started with that. And it just, again, it lent towards that sort of thinner, reedier type of presentation, which I don't think suits these loudspeakers. So I popped in the shit, excuse the pun, and that gave me a much, sorry, <laughs> that gave me a much, um, yeah, a sort of a more colorful sound, just not quite as emaciated, I guess, not quite, quite as skeletal. It just had a bit more body to it, not a huge amount, not as much as a difference in the amplifiers, but just enough to round things out nicely. So I ended up with a system that starts with the Raspberry Pi 4, then goes to the shit Modi 3, then into the NAD C316BEE V2, and then into the Wharfdale Diamond 12.1 loudspeakers. And what an awesome, awesome, fantastic, wonderful sounding entry level system this is. It's just brilliant. So from everything from Father John Misty to Fluke, remember Fluke? Um, this is a terrific sounding Wharfdale Diamond 12.1 bass system that would sue any budding audiophile. This is a fantastic starting point. So in totaling the cost of these four components, we get to 838 euros, which is not small money. It's still, you know, a sizable investment, but I think it's, I think it's well worth it, but then again, this is what I love. I mean, I, I love hi-fi gear and I've, you know, I've been into it for 30 years. So of course I'm going to in infuse to a certain degree. And I would absolutely say so if these speakers didn't deliver, but they, re they really do. And I can't really pick a major flaw apart from, you know, you have to be careful how you match your electronics. That's, I guess that's my key message with these speakers. They're very, very good, but they need careful electronics matching. So, we've got an 838 euro system. It's a good starting point. That's roughly a thousand US dollars. I guess you could go off in other directions. I don't know what those directions might be, but I hope that this video was useful for you in, you know, just sparking some ideas, sparking some inspiration for you to go off and investigate further. So if you like this video, please hit the like button below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio, and it's not just the speakers we have to talk about, but the whole system, then subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. So I just did a quick, um, no, let me say it again. So just, ah, bleh, 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 bleh. So in essence, this video is really about a Wharfdale 12 point one. <laughs> Sorry. We see a one inch soft dome tweeter that's been coated so to reduce its sort of resonance. No, this is not right. Sorry. <laughs> oh God. Now you would have to no. Why we spend more money than the, you know, on, oh, are you, are you okay? Yeah. I know I'm talking a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll now. The video's 20 minutes by now. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on. <laughs>